Welcome to the Now on PBS audio podcast. I'm Maria Hinojosa, Senior Correspondent for Now on PBS, and it's a pleasure to welcome MIT professor, American intellectual, and author of Hegemony or Survival, America's Quest for Global Dominance, Professor Noam Chomsky. Welcome to our podcast. Glad to be with you. I'm wondering, Professor Chomsky, do you feel like over the past week that there has been something of a shift when you've got the National Intelligence Report coming out saying terrorism has gotten worse. We've just concluded uh, the General Assembly at the United Nations. You've seen President Bill Clinton and Senator Hillary Clinton lashing back at Republicans. Do you feel like something has changed just in the past week or so? Well, there have been lots of interesting things, certainly. Take the National Intelligence Estimate. It's, uh, it's good that it's coming out from the National Intelligence Estimate, but uh, what's been reported is nothing new. In fact, uh, not only in the book of mine that President Chavez mentioned, but in a later one that just came out a month, several months ago, I quoted CIA and other intelligence estimates, analyses by terrorism specialists, who pointed out there has been a sharp, a very sharp rise in terrorism since the Iraq invasion, also an increase in nuclear proliferation. Uh, it was all anticipated by the same intelligence agencies and experts, it happened beyond the level that they anticipated. Uh, as far as what's happened at the UN, uh, what happened is very interesting, uh, but it didn't get reported. At least I didn't see it. And um, what would be that? The content of what uh, President Chavez said. Uh, so, for example, his most important address uh, was the one to the Security Council. Uh, there was no inflammatory rhetoric, so there was nothing for gossip columnists. Uh, it was just a discussion of very serious issues. We talked about the energy and environmental crisis, uh, the uh, need to change the, the socioeconomic order in the advanced industrial countries to reduce sharply the use of hydrocarbons for, for uh, energy. Uh, he talked about how to fight international terrorism uh, and uh, went on with uh, quite serious issues. Well, that's important. At the General Assembly, uh, the rhetoric, inflammatory rhetoric, that's what the news focused on. Uh, also a uh, false claim, turns out, uh, that he thought I had died. Actually, he was referring to John Kenneth Galbraith. But what was missing uh, was the content. I mean, it was reported, found a few words, uh, saying that there was uh, prolonged applause, uh, so prolonged that the chair had to interrupt it. But uh, nothing much was said about the reasons. I mean, why is there prolonged applause? In other words, why does someone like Hugo Chavez, who many in this country see as a firebrand, actually on an international scale, have people who want to hear what he has to say and who support what he has to say in terms well, of the global view? Maybe it's because view? of the substance of what he said. Uh, the substance of what he said, which is called here very controversial, uh, is that uh, the U.S. is a leading threat to peace in the world. But that's not controversial. Uh, just simply read the international polls, and you find that even in Europe, which is where there's uh, the largest support for the United States, the United States uh, leads by far as uh, among the population as regarded as a threat to world peace, way beyond Iran, far beyond any Russia, China, anyone else. Uh, well, you know, those are not controversial statements. They may be controversial here, but it's because, if so, it's because we're out of step. Let's talk for a second, Professor, about the National Intelligence Estimate, um, which was first published um, by the New York Times on Sunday. The fact that this report says that essentially the Iraq Jihad is shaping a new generation of terrorist leaders and operatives. Um, as you say, you're not surprised by this at all. No, and I've yet quoted it the similar reports from intelligence agencies for the last several years. Why do you think, then, that this report is getting such attention when this information has been out there? Well, first of all, it's the National Intelligence Aid Estimate. It's not just the CIA and uh, specialists on terror and so on. So, yes, it's coming from a higher level. Also, I, I think probably the reason is uh, because by now, opposition to the war itself within mainstream circles has increased. I'm wondering in terms of the response from the left um, or even the Democrats? I mean, is there a credible position uh, in terms of dealing with terrorism from the left? Um, and why is it that the Democrats are being quite quiet at this time? 
well, it's, it's, it's an interesting situation in American political history. I mean, it's no big secret that for the last year, uh, just about every week, the Republicans, uh, the Republican administration has been shooting itself in the foot on one thing or another, whether it's Katrina or Iraq or, you know, a long list, don't have to go through it. And it's kind of interesting that the Democrats have basically not gained from this. The only gains they've made is that support for the Republicans has dropped. Well, what that illustrates is that there is no functioning opposition party. People don't know what the Democratic proposals are. Uh, what, what are they saying? When Bush responds and says, okay, what do you have to say about it? Uh, there's nothing much. That even includes uh, not only international affairs, uh, but even uh, major domestic crises. What would be your proposal in terms of dealing with terrorism in the world geopolitical my, situation my that we find ourselves in? My proposal happens to be very mainstream. It's the same as the proposal that you read from government and outside specialists on terrorism. They say with virtual uniformity, other countries too, that terrorism is a very serious problem. And if you want to deal with it, you have to pay attention to its causes, uh, to the background from which it comes. And what should be done is to deal with it. The worst way to deal with it is by giving gifts to Osama bin Laden. And as a number of the specialists have pointed out, Bush is Osama bin Laden's best ally because the reactions are violence. So let's take 9-11, a terrible crime. It turns out, and we now know, knew then, that it was bitterly condemned by the jihadi movement around the world. Uh, the leading figures, you know, the radical clerics and others, were denouncing it. Well, there was an opportunity uh, to make some moves towards uh, the Muslim world, and in fact even the radical Islamic extremist elements in the Muslim world, and undermine support for al-Qaeda. Well, what Bush did was the opposite. Resorted to violence, uh, particularly in Iraq, which simply mobilized support for Osama bin Laden. That's the way to deal with terrorism if you want to escalate it. People may say, all right, well, we have now some hindsight in terms of September 11th, Osama bin Laden, but the reality is that we have President Bush in office for the next couple of years. Can the politics of how we move forward on an international scale change at this moment? Can there, in fact, be effective dialogue so that some of what you're saying becomes incorporated, or is it simply a stalemate? We'll just have to wait until uh, there's a new president in office before anything can change. It depends on whether we believe we live in a democratic society or a dictatorship. If it's a democratic society, of course it can change. Uh, public opinion can be influential. The media can be influential. Uh, we're not North Korea, after all. We have every opportunity we like. In fact, let's take a possible catastrophe that's looming right now. I mean, Iraq is just uh, escalating out of control. It's a total disaster. Uh, but uh, it, there is a possibility, which until recently I didn't take very seriously, that the tiny clique in Washington that's barely holding on to power might actually attack Iran. Uh, that's, as far as we know, over the opposition of U.S. military and intelligence. It's certainly over the opposition of, of uh, Europe, and it's against the overwhelming opposition of the rest of the world. I mean, even the countries in the region, I mean, it's kind of remarkable, but the uh, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Pakistan, which don't like Iran and uh, hate it, in fact, and uh, certainly don't want it to have nuclear weapons, nevertheless, public opinion in those countries prefers Iranian nuclear weapons to a U.S. military attack. It's not because they want the weapons. Of course they don't. Uh, furthermore, there are ways to deal with it. There are diplomatic options. The question is, will public opinion here compel the administration to pursue them, or will we allow them to drive to a war which could have horrendous consequences, could blow up the region with global consequences? We have choices about these things. And what would you think then? I mean, people protested against the war in Iraq before it was launched, while it was launched, worldwide protests. Um, is it about street mobilizations? Is that what you think needs to happen? Um, or is it going to happen, in your view, in a different kind of modern form of democratic expression? There's no magic keys to this, 